Hi there guys, uh, down here on the bench, something a little bit different. Uh, it's not a watch, as you can see, it is something in bits, <laughs> uh, or partially in bits, as you can see. What we've got here is a Zeiss Icon Contaflex camera. Uh, this is from the late 1950s, early 1960s, and it is the BC model, I think. Um, this is just from doing a little bit of research. I'm not that knowledgeable. It's a it's an SLR Super 35 camera. It uses 35 millimeter film. It actually had inside of it this um, exposed roll of uh, Kodachrome. Unfortunately, some of it a little bit more exposed than it should have been because I'd started to open the back before I realized there was a film in. So I closed it up, wound the film back. Uh, but I am going to try and develop this. It'll have to be black and white chemicals um, because uh, it's obviously, this is reversal film, this is slide film. And Kodachrome hasn't been uh, commercially able to be processed since 2010. Uh, it's not something you could do at home. The chemicals are particularly nasty, which is why it's no longer used. But Kodachrome was very, very famous. This has been sat for at least 15 years and very likely quite a bit longer, 20 plus perhaps. Um, I picked this up from a charity shop and it's it had quite a bit of, um, of wear. It had been stored somewhere that was clearly damp and unfortunately the lens is not very good it has fungus on it um, you can't really see very clearly on this one but the rearmost lens behind the leaf shutter uh, has spots on there where it's attacked the lens coating the middle one is actually pretty good that's not bad this one screws into here but with a few more bits of these that are dotted around the bench that you see so this has all got to be reassembled in a specific way and then the front one is actually quite bad the outer uh, most the outer one has quite a few uh, fungus spots and marks and it's quite badly marked and damaged the coating but I'm hoping it's going to be good enough to get some images and see what they look like I've had this in bits for a couple of reasons one to clean the lenses this is as far as a dare assemble it at the moment. I would like to disassemble it a bit further, but this is quite a complex lens array because it is a leaf shutter lens. And for those who don't know, a leaf shutter is different to your typical focal plane shutter, which is a curtain type array, which either goes like that or like that. And uh, that's dependent on how old the camera is and that kind of thing. Uh, more modern ones tend to be um, an, an array of flat metal pieces on a hinge system, like a cantilever thing, whereas older ones would have a curtain of fabric that would slide across and another curtain that would slide across to act as your shutter. And the good thing about a leaf shutter um, is that you can sync, uh, flash sync at any shutter speed, which is really, really cool. It's a, it's a great little feature because a leaf shutter just goes poof, open, poof, closed like a, an iris like the iris that you set your f-stop with the downside with a leaf shutter is they're built into the lens assemblies and are therefore quite expensive uh, although zeiss um icon contaflex what have you got around this by making this novel little setup where you're actually just changing the front objective lens which is kind of cool i think uh, I think they were really onto a good thing there. Uh, this was quite dirty. It's, it's had a really good clean up so far. I've taken quite a few bits off and given it all a really good clean with isopropyl alcohol. I've given um, a little bit of cleaning and lubrication in inverted commas using lighter fluid on some of the gears because these tend to get sticky with mechanical operated shutters like this and they tend to get sticky and a bit of light fluid works wonders because it allows a slight bit of lubrication without putting oil uh, all around things where, because you don't want oil to start spreading inside things like this because it gets into places you just don't want it and especially onto the film and such, which is never a good thing. Uh, the shutter is working, it's not perfect, but hopefully it's good enough. And um, being mechanical, of course, you can manually set all the settings. So I should be able to get some usable photos from it. So what I'm going to do, I just filmed this to show you the shutter action. And um, I'm just going to zoom in so you can see that clearer. So here we are up close and personal. Uh, this little, whoops, 
this little metal fellow here, this, this doodad is the one that uh, does all the magic, the opening and closing of everything. And you can see it's on this toothed ratcheted uh, wheel and this gear system here. And these here are the little mechanical timers. They're basically like little, um, uh, little clock, mechanical clock timers or egg timers, if you like. They've got a series of spinning gears that time how long your shutter stays open and, uh, and closes and all that kind of stuff. And then these levers here open and close your iris and your, um, uh, your uh, leaf shutter. So a couple of things happen when you cock this, uh, you load 35 millimeter film in and you cock it just like a modern 35 millimeter by pulling the lever and releasing it like so. And the first thing that happens is it opens the leaf shutter. The next thing that happens, because this is an SLR, so you focus by looking through your viewfinder through a mirror and through the lens, but that mirror isn't there until you cock the camera. That moves up out of the way for your lens to do its thing. But rather than a, a modern SLR where it flaps up, your shutter fires and then it flaps back down, this, this actually opens when you cock it. So when you cock that, you can see that the mirror moves down like so. And then when you fire the shutter, it flips back up. Now the reason that's not gone round is because that little metal bit's just slipped out of uh, alignment because I had the camera upside down. But uh, what I'm going to do now is just cock it and show you the what happens. So you cock the camera and it does two things as you cock it. I'll do that slowly. It opens your leaf shutter. So you can see that's opening like that, just like an iris, like, your, like you would for your f-stops. There's a second iris behind it, which is for your f-stops. Uh, it's currently wide open at f2.8. I, I can't close it down anymore because the bit that does the closing down is, uh, is this bit down, down here and uh, uh, attaching to some other bits. So I can't actually make that close down um, at the moment. So you're just going to have to... Uh, have it with a wide open shot to see to see what's what it, and then it moves the mirror down so you can focus you focus by just moving the lens in and out just like you would with any normal focusing system and it has a split viewfinder like um, any sort of vintage SLR that you used to with a little split circle image in the middle uh, as you can see it's moved this round on this geared system so when you press the shutter it First of all, lifts up the mirror and closes the iris, closes the leaf shutter rather. It then sets the iris to the f-stop that it should be. It then opens the shutter, times it for the specific amount of time it needs to be open, and it then closes the shutter, um, ending the exposure. So it does quite a lot in a short space of time, and it's all mechanical, it's all done by gears. So as I press it, you'll see it's all very quick. I'll do that another couple of times so you can see what's going on, hopefully. So as you can see, you cock it and this moves round on this gear here. As you press it, this starts things in motion. This lever here operates your iris. This lever here operates your leaf shutter. And this gear here moves around and it moves these little pins which adjust your... Um, just the f-stop I think or rather these little pins which actually bear onto this brass ring up here which I can't pick up at the moment this brass ring here uh, that adjusts your f-stop and then as this moves down it sort of resets everything uh, hopefully that makes sense so I'll do that again and one more time just so uh, hopefully you can you can see what's going on because I think this is fascinating and I just wanted to share it There you go. A quick last one, uh, while I've just added this extra little bit here. So I've changed the shutter speed accordingly. As you can see, moving that brass ring moves these little pins down here. Move that around so it's at, whoops, one second on there. This all needs securing into place properly. Uh, but, reset that, let's just cock that shutter again. And what you'll be able to see this time around is the aperture um, at f22 which is at its uh, narrowest aperture 
So and press the shutter. And there you go. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I like that. And one final, final thing, and I know this short clip's turning into some ridiculous epic um, worthy of Peter Jackson's storytelling. But, um, but this ring that fits on here, it fits down here like so. If you flip this over, I noticed as I was disassembling it, now I disassembled this with, with gloves on. And if you look on there, you can see we've got a fingerprint. And I think it's, it kind of amuses me to think that that could be the fingerprint of a... Um, of a factory worker from Germany in the 1950s on the assembly line. Uh, there you go, interesting. And I'm gonna leave that just for, uh, just for novelty's sake. There you go, that's definitely it now. Thanks for watching.